Hello again. Everybody still alive and kicking? Uh, I see some people in the doubt, right? This is here, here at the moment to close our 16th edition, right? And oh, would be the response I would expect. Uh, no, we first, I mean, as the slide says, it says thank you Mechler, but actually it's a thank you to everyone. And everyone applies, not only to the crew, the volunteers, everybody who is part of Brucon, and it also includes you, it's the community thing. And again, we can look back at an amazing edition. It's our largest edition yet. So we were with 650 people. That's the maximum of the building kind of that we want, and it's also the atmosphere that we want. This is the group that we want to have. Not more, that's fine. You get to socialize, you get to attend the talk. That's what Brooklyn is all about. So a big thank you to everyone here. Thank you. All right, then we continue with the CTF. So first and foremost, everyone, there was one challenge, one of the easiest challenges in the CTF. I was running around, and Kun, and Kun as well, were running around with a badge that just had a flag on it. 12 people, or 12 teams, out of the 94 found it. So just a, just a heads up. Um, but no, thank you very much for playing. Um, like Tom already said, we had 650 people in the con, of which 200 played the CTF. So uh, I hope you all enjoyed. We had quite a few submissions. Not all were correct, of course. Um, but I think we can go to the, the ceremony as well. Um, maybe first, one more thing. Thank you for Torion and Robe uh, for the web challenges. We had uh, Lime Security for the ICS challenges. And then also Hoest, uh, who supplied some game challenges and ICS challenges as well. So uh, first and foremost, thank you for, for them, because they made this possible. <laughs> All right, and then we, uh, we said that there was going to be some uh, yeah. We said there was going to be some some uh, surprise, yeah, surprise at the end. So we have some prizes for uh, for the top three. So maybe first we'll start with the third one. So uh, can APT zero X zero zero please join us on stage? <laughs> so we have a a small small surprise. It's a, a sneak peek of some of the merch from next year. A little teddy bear for a third place. Um, I'm gonna give you the bag. So it's a teddy bear with a Brucon hacker hoodie. Um, next year you all be able to get it, but they they got it now. So yeah, applause for APT zero X zero zero. Then next up, Crimson Seven. They were uh, in a heated battle for first, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I saw some of your teammates already had to leave, so I'm gonna hand this. You guys got one of the chargers and then the teddy bear. So uh, thanks, Crimson Seven. <laughs> and then for our number one, can we get the? Uh, Cyber Schnick Schnack Schnuck to come uh, to come to the stage with us. <laughs> so uh, as promised before, it's a uh, Raspberry Pi Five with a teddy bear charger and some sunglasses. <laughs> Congratulations! So as every year, every year we deploy our own Wi-Fi network but less and less people are using it. And people that are using it are unfortunately using encryption or VPNs. It's not so fun for a wall of sheep, so uh, stop using it. Start using like good protocols, not encrypted clear text. No one? Ah, no, but it's really clear. People are using their 4G, 5G, or not, no internet. Hard to believe the last one. Now, all talks are recorded, streamed, and they're almost all online yet. 
Don't know for the last one, but all the rest will be online on YouTube already. So have a look. If you've missed a few due to too much networking, they're here all and they're all available. Now, a word to the creators of the badge. Here you go, Tom. Thank you very much. I was asked to, uh, to talk a little bit about the badge and some of the things that uh, went on there. So to start off, uh, we made this badge uh, with uh, three of us, uh, myself and uh, two amazing other people. Nicolette, I believe uh, some of you have met here. She was here yesterday and today. Uh, Joris Witteman, uh, he, he did the hardware. Uh, you, uh, you might meet some other time. All right, so in January of this year, we were approached by the, the Orga uh, of Brucon uh, whether we could make a, a badge for them. We, we made badges for a, a bunch of other events. Uh, they liked it. Uh, so they asked us uh, if we could help out. You see here the, the progression. Uh, in February, we had the first sketches, lots of uh, discussions with the Brucon Orga. Um, in March, things got serious. You can see that it looks already a bit like uh, the badge that you have around your neck right now. In June, we had the, the, the first prototype, and in uh, August already, uh, we had the, the, the final hardware. Now, I don't know how many of you uh, here are familiar with event badges. Can you, can you raise your hand? Okay. Uh, how often uh, do you see an event badge uh, being ready a month before the event? Raise your hand. <laughs> no hands. Yeah. So we were really proud uh, to... Uh, the night before. The night before, yeah, exactly. So, of course, this badge too uh, was not without problems, right? But we were really proud to, uh, to finish already a month beforehand with the hardware and, and the firmware was, uh, was done and these kinds of things. So this, uh, this is something we're really proud of. Now, most of you have played around with some of the, some of the apps that were on the badge already. Uh, can we get a show of hands? How many people did the, the Brook on game? Yeah, so there's maybe 80% uh, of the room or something. I'm really proud of all of you. Um, so th there was this game uh, on the badge. Uh, you had uh, pixels representing beers. Um, you could pour them around uh, on your own badge, and via the cable, you could pour them to one of your neighbors. Uh, if you had an entire badge filled uh, with droplets, uh, you could get a special pin from uh, one of the crew members. And we saw a lot of people uh, playing around with this. Um, and we're really happy to see that. So how does it work? Um, when you got your badge, there were 150 uh, droplets on it. They're RSA signed. Uh, they can be transferred from one to the other uh, via this cable that you got with the badge over a, a simple uh, serial protocol. And we designed it to be ultra secure. It's completely unbreakable, as many of you have found out. That's not true. It was super breakable. So it, it was designed to look secure, but actually have a plethora of ways that you could abuse it. Right, so some of the, the fun ones were, um, whilst pouring in real time, your droplets disappeared but it only was written to the file system of your badge once every 10 seconds. And so if you pour and then power off, you wouldn't have actually lost the droplets. Some of you found it. Uh, many of you found the option to reset the, the droplets that you had before, so you could actually make a dump uh, of, of the situation before, then pour into your neighbor and then reset the situation of your droplets after. So it was really nice. Uh, you could actually copy the droplets that you had before and just paste them indefinitely. All of the, the duplicates would be accepted, no problem. I don't think anyone found this, but actually also in the cryptography, uh, by design we, uh, we put a weakness. You could, uh, you could either brute force the key uh, or brute force the, the sort of checksum that was in there. Uh, if the decrypted um, uh, droplet started with BRU, brew, it would be accepted. I don't think anyone exploited this. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So for, uh, to, to repeat uh, the comment, if you completely deleted the file, it would regenerate with the initial 150 droplets. So lots of, uh, lots of ways to abuse this, and luckily you found very many of them. The most fun one I, I, I find uh, on the right here, somebody figured out that if you splice multiple cables together, you could send from one badge into two, three other badges, and they would all receive uh, perfectly fine. All right, then there were also uh, three CTF challenges uh, on the badge. Uh, they, were, they were played uh, quite nicely. 
I believe uh, from the previous slide we saw there were 92 teams. Uh, the first challenge got uh, 70, 57 solves. So it was a very good score. 61 in the end, thank you very much. Uh, so this, this was designed to be a, an entry level uh, CTF challenge. Um, if you connected to the badge via USB, uh, you were dropped into a Python shell and from there you could explore the file system uh, and find that there was a flag.txt file inside, the, it, it was just in plain text. Then the second one, uh, um, you had a, a Python function to print the flag. Um, if you called it, uh, it said, uh, I'm checking if you're root, waiting, you're not root. Um, if you called that function very quickly and then uh, modified a file on the file system whilst it was waiting, uh, there's a time of check, time of use uh, bug. Uh, you, could, uh, you could trigger the function into printing uh, the flag. I believe this had six solves in the end. Yeah. Now the third one, the third one was really mean, really mean. There was, um, there was one solve for it in the end. The challenge was uh, you have to blindly provide shell code using the, the uh, architecture of this microcontroller on the badge um, that would accept the flag and print it out into the screen. Um, and you could not see why it crashed if it crashed. So you can imagine this is a, an insane level, uh, level CTF challenge and one team solved it. Two in the end. Do you know who actually? Let's give an applause to the name. So, yeah, Cyber Snicks X Ducks. Let's give them an applause. <laughs> Insane. And, then, uh, the and the nerds. Let's give it up for the nerds. <laughs> Very well done. All right. If you look at your badge uh, flat like this, you will see that the, the middle of it is black. It's quite unique. Normally, this is like a transparent brown. Uh, the black one is often called uh, after dark. It's a, a way of making uh, a printed circuit boards where the, the, the middle section is black and you can have transparent solder mask on top of it. That's why it look, looks uh, copper-like. Now this after dark, you can only get in two layer PCBs. And anywhere in the world, only two layer PCBs. You'll notice that uh, this uh, batch is four layers. Uh, we found it really important to uh, get the feeling of a, a copper uh, brewing kettle. Um, and we needed four layers to, to get uh, all of the, the chips connected to each other. So we actually had a, a PCB fabrication house design a process for us to make something that doesn't exist. Uh, and for this, our production partner, Allnet, that we've used for God knows how many hacker conferences so far, um, they were really amazing in, in convincing this factory to invent something new that uh, you cannot get anywhere in the world. Uh, so uh, I would like to get an applause also for this Brucon badge <laughs> being produced in a way that you will not find anywhere else. All right, so finally, what now? Uh, you, can, uh, you can do a lot of stuff uh, with this badge after the event. Uh, the hardware design and the firmware will be made uh, publicly available. Brucon has um, a GitHub account for this. It's not published as of yet right now. Uh, it will be published uh, in the next uh, few days. This badge is uh, based on another badge that we made called the Pixel Badge, uh, and a lot of the documentation on how to use it, how to program it, how to write apps, this kind of stuff is the same, so you can follow it on pixel.curious.supplies slash docs. And if you're interested into this weird uh, kind of geeky, uh, nerdy uh, gadgets, you can also join our Discord uh, and uh, ask questions and join along. Uh, so that's it for me. Uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity to make a, a really cool badge, and uh, we hope to see you at the next event. Cheers. <laughs>
we also realize we can always improve. And we really want to capture, and everybody knows it's perfectly safe to scan random QR codes, uh, but you can also type in the URL. So please, if you have something to share with it, can be positive, constructive, or anything, please use this. We really read all these comments, and we try to take them into account every year to further improve. So feedback is welcome. And like Kuno already mentioned, we're absolutely here to stay. I think we found, after our third year here in Mechelen, we found our new home. It was hard to leave Kent, I have to be honest. You still miss the city somewhat. But I believe in a being in a building that used to be a brewery, being so close to the hacking for beer type of motto, I mean, we're in the right place. So we're happy to stay. And you can already see the dates for next year. We will be back. We will do spring training again. We will do the regular training and the conference next year in Mechelen. So keep those dates already in your agenda. As always, we do ticket sale the 1st of June at 5 p.m. CET. It went really fast this year. It goes every year faster. So keep the, keep the F5 button close, but you'll make it. It's not that crazy. It's a couple of hours. At least you'll have time to buy tickets. We will all well and see you next uh, again next year. And that's it. So thanks again, everyone. And we hope to see you next year.